And in New York, if you're looking for somebody who's available for a drink on Friday night, there's only about 4 million people who are. So this Friday night, we sail up there, and it's myself. And would you believe who was in the crowd? And this will come as a tremendous shock to her husband, but what's he going to do? Fly out and beat me up? Mary Alice Williams was there. We went up with Mary Alice Williams, myself. I believe Dr. Frank Field was there. We all worked at Channel 4 together, and... We went up to the Rainbow for a couple of pops uh, before the update, the news update at 8.57.37. So now it's 20 minutes to 9, and uh, and I say, well, i got to get back downstairs for the update at 57.37. I said, uh, you guys going to stick around, or is this it? And, you know, Mary Alice always said, I have to go home now. So she was leaving, and, you know, Frank Field, who was crazed then, was, you know, going out on the streets to, you know, discover new temperatures to report on his weather forecast. So I went back down to the studio and sitting there in the chair, you know, with my hair all combed nice and all cleaned up like I used to be. And Bill McCord comes on. Well, this is the NBC News update brought to you by American Express. Now from New York, here is Tom Snyder. Good evening, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, the stage manager falls across the desk and the, and, and, and the cameraman comes out and hits him and calls him a name I can't say here. And all I can see is the mortgage and my kid and my career coming to a complete end before my eyes. And all of a sudden, Chuck Scarborough comes roaring in, and he says, you're both a bunch of, and then he calls them a name, and he starts the fight. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. And then I look out of the corner of my eye, and, and they're all starting to laugh, okay? And then I look up at the monitor, and none of this is on the air. The movie's on the air. I said, what the hell's going on here? Well, they, 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 they had me. They never told me, but the update was moved from 8.57.37 to 8.37.57. Got it? Clever, huh? So I'm up uh, having the drink with Mary Alice Will You and Frank Field and whoever, and the update comes up, and Chuck Scarborough, who was always dying to get on the network when I was there, said, well, I'll take care of that for Tom. Since he's not here, I'll address the nation tonight. So Chuck did the update, and then, of course, they concocted the plan to nail me when I got downstairs. And boy, did they ever. It's the only one I've ever missed, though. Tim Conway is here tonight. Dorf. Uh, Tim Conway's Funny America. All kinds of nifty stuff with this. Now, the last time Conway was here, so help me, he had a guy with him, remember? You, no, neither of you in the control room, Mike and Deb, were here. We've changed the whole crew around since then. <laughs> and in the book, you'll find out why. Uh, <laughs> uh, the last time Conway was here, he had a guy with him named Rocco who did nothing but light Mr. Conway's cigarettes. And at the time, Conway didn't smoke. Still doesn't, as a matter. But this Rocco would sit there, and all of a sudden, a cigarette would appear in Conway's hand. Rocco would get out the Zippo, zip, zip. And that, that was all the guy did, was light Mr. Conway's cigarettes. Tonight, Rocco is not here. God knows what Conway's bringing in here. Don't forget to uh, <laughs> ask Mr. Goodwrench for the quick lube. We'll be right back after these messages. We are back with Tim Conway, who is the star of Tim Conway's Funny America on ABC. Semi-humorous America. Semi-humorous America. <laughs> Sundays at 8.30 Eastern right. and Pacific, 7.30 Central. Mm -hmm. I was the only one in the room when we named the show, as you might well guess. Tim Conway's right. Funny America. Yeah. And the vote was close. Actually, it really <laughs> was. It was a tie for a while, and then we... <laughs> Flip a coin. For those who haven't seen it, and mm -hmm. that's me, that's true. Uh, what goes on? You, the cameras travel the country looking for humorous, for humor, situations. yes, difficult right. to find at times, as we proved today. <laughs> well, um, Henry the Fonswinkler, and uh, I don't know if you an, uh, know uh, Anne Daniel and the Fonzette uh, Daniel, they do MacGyver here at ABC, mm -hmm. and they came to me and had a, uh, a rather humorous idea for a show where you would just kind of, almost not hidden camera type thing, but mm -hmm. where sometimes a camera was exposed, sometimes it wasn't. And they said, let's go to ABC and see if we can sell them on this idea. And I said, if you do sell them on the idea, you'll never be able to do it because it's just uh, impossible to do. So I went in along with them and we talked ABC into doing it and uh, then came out of the room and I said, now you know that the, well, you can't do this. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. Mm -hmm. But um, it's... Luckily, ABC is in a giving mood this Aren't year. they though? Yeah. They're so kind. They <laughs> <laughs> really are, yeah. Because normally, when you when you plan things and try to pull something off, it never works. This one, I really didn't care that much about, and now here it is, probably the most successful yeah, thing I'll ever do that yeah. they've ever had. Very yeah. annoying. Yeah. yeah, right. 
because I've been canceled a lot. And once by ABC when I was doing Rango, that very popular show in which I was kind of a Western um, marshal. Quite funny, too, might I add. And we had done, uh, I think, nine shows, and uh, an executive from ABC came down, and I was canceled in a very unusual way. He came in and said, stop doing this. <laughs> and uh, we did. <laughs> Just to kind of shut down that afternoon, and uh, we went home. So, um... <laughs> and it... it uh, <laughs> were, were you on the one... Where where they canceled it in the as it was coming across the country. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you remember yeah. we had George the Slaughter. <laughs> yes, <laughs> George said this will be a funny idea. Uh, that was at ABC too. Yes, yeah, we had a right here, right? Yeah, a premiere party in this very building the yeah. night it was on, and it was showing in New York, and we got word that it wasn't going well. In Cleveland, they shut it off. I mean, it was in 17 minutes. The guy shut it off. I mean, a guy who, was, who hadn't played the organ in years came down, and he played for 11 minutes, and uh, they hung in a slide up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that uh, that and by the time it got back to Los Angeles, they've been ca canceled. Canceled. Right right. Ca so the cancellation party and the premiere party were very <laughs> inexpensive because uh, George just had the one party <laughs> and uh, one bottle for everybody. Then we didn't have to come back. Did it bother you when you were canceled? No, I was so used to it. I mean, everything <laughs> I've done has always been canceled. So uh, yeah, I was canceled by C CBS one time uh, by Perry Lafferty. He said, "Come over to the house." And I, and I said, "Why?" I said, "I know where you know." Because because we were getting uh, ratings, and it used to say an asterisk C below, not a, not uh, that many sets in use. We were counting, and uh, he said, "Come over to the house," and I did. And he said, uh, "You know, you're canceled." And I said, "Yeah," and I said, it's, "It really wasn't worth the drive over here." And he, but he said, "We want you to do another show in the mm -hmm. fall." I so said, we can cancel. Yeah, <laughs> I said, "I really haven't thought about the cancellation that much. I should have some kind of depression or anything." So, well, if you know, you want to go out on the porch and uh, be depressed for a moment, but come back in and let me know about the other one. So I, yeah. I went right back in and um, uh, did the other one for him, which is an that guy canceled me too, yeah. <laughs> well, all of them have. Yeah, that, that's kind of the fun of the business, it really is. Because I never wanted to be in this business, and so uh, I've had a pretty decent run, actually, for not wanting to do this. When you were living back in the Midwest, you, mm -hmm. you, know, you were born in Willoughby, suburban Cleveland, and yeah. you worked in Cleveland with uh, Ernie Anderson, who's yeah. been here. And you had this vision of eventually going to New York or Los Angeles and, quote, making it. Right. How is all this different from what you thought it was going to be in Cleveland when you started your career? Um, actually, I, I didn't really have those visions. What I had was a vision of making enough money to pay for a car. And I worked for Big Wilson, uh, who was a disc jockey in Cleveland at the time. Uh, he played the piano in the morning and had a canary that sang uh, when he played the piano. And I wrote for him uh, some stuff. And I had never been a writer, so it, uh, and he had never actually been a reader, so it worked out it worked very nicely. It worked out fine, plus the canary wouldn't and the know canary, the anyway, No, right? and most of the stuff was on the bottom of the canary page, you know, the papers Her, in yeah. there. So, uh, basically, I really wasn't gunning to be in the business. And then, Ernie Anderson, uh, as you know, really is not uh, all that bright. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are splinters in the windmills of his mind, yeah, believe yeah, me. Right, and right. Um, <laughs> he said, why don't we talk uh, station into my being talent? And I was the director, and Ernie was the talent. Talent. And as you know, I have never directed, and Ernie has no talent. So um, <laughs> we um, we had a, an hour and a half program every morning where I, we, he hosted a movie, and uh, I couldn't uh, back time movies because uh, that means that the movie should end at the hour. Right. And I couldn't uh, figure out how to do that because I never directed. So uh, we never showed the endings of movies, and people would call, especially on Citizen Kane. They were really annoyed because they didn't see Rosebud and everything. <laughs> and I said, well, why don't we show the ends of movies on Fridays? And we did. And. Uh, <laughs> So on Friday, you could tune in and you see all the endings of uh, these movies. <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, I really, uh, I have no business in this business. You know and, what's um, great about you, Conway, is that you give the rest of us hope. You know, yes, that's uh, you know true. I, I think yeah. every now and again that I'm drifting off no, the no, edge no, of no. total insanity, no. but God, I'm straight. I no, mean, no. I, yeah. if you have no you talent, are really you can make it in this business. There's no question. There's, there's room for people who have no talent in this business. <laughs> as I demonstrate yes. right, nightly here, yeah. Showing the ends of movies on Friday. That, mm -hmm. by, the way, that, that, by the way, that's not a bad idea. No, it, well, they thought it was, it was really an in thing, you know, but in reality, I just I couldn't time uh, those things. You know yeah. what's interesting that, about that is I think about it. You know, I've got the uh, the satellite dish, which is like a super cable system because mm -hmm. you get all the movies. Yeah. And like there are certain scenes in movies, if they're on the on the tube, I can't pass up that right. scene. Yeah. 
like the one now where Nicholson Waltz is basing her around in Batman at the top of the... I can't pass that up. Right. There ought to be a show on the network every week with just the great scenes from movies. Sure, why should you have to wait an hour and a half? Exactly. You want to see Rosebud, (laughs) boom, we got it on Friday. It takes about a minute and a half. It's over. Right. I thought I'd sit there and be bored with that. We are continuing with Tim Conway, uh, who is the star of Tim Conway's funny... Amusing. um, Semi-amusing. Semi-amusing, right. Let's not (laughs) qualify this thing yet. America's Funniest Tim Conway, weeknights on ABC. It's on Sunday, July 29, 8.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Now, a station break. (laughs) We're back with Tim Conway. Tim Conway's A Funny America. Semi-humorous. Semi-humorous. 8.30 Sundays, 7.30 Central. Uh Uh-huh. I thought so. Yeah. Boy, I'm really yeah. stuck. Yeah, uh, where you have a little lock up in your head. Yeah, well, that'll happen absolute. at this age. <laughs> yeah, I do that. Uh, sometimes I go to introduce my wife, and I say, "I'd like you to meet," uh, and I <laughs> cannot come up with that name. She'll uh, she'll remind me. She, mm-hmm. I have it a little embroidered on her thing. Now. <laughs> it comes with age, Tom. It's it's pretty much over for you. But you're in yes, uh, on this uh, every night, so you're going to have some problems. See, I just once in a while, sporadic for me. But uh, no, I um, I forget things quite readily now. And people, if I don't see people in the same uniform that I met them in. It's over. Um, my pool man, uh, or a guy who <laughs> does our pool, or whatever they call those people. Pool man. Pool man has been doing our pool for, gee, I would say five years. And I went to dinner one night, and he was in a suit, and I had no idea who he was. Oh, this guy and was. he talked to me for a long time, and I said, uh, if you're not in a swimming suit, I really basically don't know Don't who know you, you. Yeah. right. And try not to bother me. The question that I had planned to, 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 to try mm-hmm. was, where is Rocco, the guy who likes your cigarettes? That was Tony. Yeah, Tony. Okay. Was I smoking at the time? Yes, you were. Really? Yeah. yeah. Gee, yeah, that's kind of funny. And by the way, so was I. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you quit, too. Oh, huh? yeah. No, you just quit. You bang. You said, I'm going to quit in a, a one day. Bang. Yeah. That's what yeah. I did. I did too. That uh, Tony uh, still uh, is, is. He'll be out in, uh, <laughs> I think, three months. Yeah, he's gonna. He's coming out uh, on good behavior too. Might I add? He's a good kid. He yeah. really is. Here, he'll be out with me again, and maybe I'll go back to smoking. But I mean, you blew us all away because really? we said here was Conway, and he, he's got this guy that does nothing but light his own smokes for. But you know what? That's all Tony can do. Really? Yeah. That's, uh, he basically is uh, quite demented, and yeah. uh, I taught him to do that—to yeah. light the cigarette. Uh-huh. So he's good. That's about all he can do, though. Yeah, and a little bit of wallet making, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Tried sandals, he can't. He can't get sizes, you know. But wallets and cigarettes, he's pretty good. And I told you off stage that Bob Feller was here one night. Mm-hmm. Bob still lives back in Pepper Pike, I think, and, yep. I, and and restores. Are you ready for this? Old, old antique cars and tractors. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bob. Uh, As opposed to new antique cars. That's right. right. You, it's hard to restore a new antique car. Bob was supposed to be a guest on Ernie's show when we were doing this because uh, uh, he would also have little guests on the movies. And, of course, the show is so bad, we would always <laughs> announce and say, um, like, Bob Feller is going to be on, the, mm-hmm. on this morning's uh, show. And Bob called and said, you got to be out of your mind. I wouldn't be on that piece <laughs> of crap. If, uh, and uh, the next break, Ernie said, Bob called, and he's a little stuck in traffic. But mm-hmm. he's uh, going, and then Bob called and said, stop doing that. And then at the end of the show, uh, Ernie would look over like at the door and say, oh, here's Bob. Now, oh, we're out of time. Sorry. Can't talk to you now, Bob. We'll catch you next week. And we did that for a week, too, when we couldn't get guests. And uh, so uh, Bob wrote us a nice letter saying stop uh, stop using my name. But weren't you telling me a story that Bob Feller's mother... I don't know mother... if this is true or not, but Bob's mother supposedly... Why should, why, why should, why it, should stop... it not be true? And why should it stop you if it isn't? That's, uh, right. Certainly. Um, you know, uh, Cleveland is famous for stories about Cleveland, as you know. And, and they, they send an, or they put an article in the paper every year saying, why do people make fun of Cleveland? And then list all the things that people say about <laughs> Cleveland, which yeah. kind of renews the confidence of Cleveland. Uh, for instance, as you know, the river uh, in Cleveland caught on fire. Cuyahoga River, right. And burned for three days, right. which, uh, because it had so much oil in it from all the, uh, the ships and everything. And the fire department went down and put water on the river to put it out. And then <laughs> the chief, finally, after um, hosing down the river for about three hours, said, excuse me, I, I don't think we're really <laughs> making any headway here at all. And uh, so they went home, they talked about it for a couple of days as piers were burning, and the guy said, maybe we ought to smother it. It would be good. You know? yeah, all right. So they put baking soda. Uh, but Bob Feller supposedly had never pitched, uh, his mother had never seen him pitch. And it was three years, and, and finally they had a Sunday for her or something, a big affair. And they, Bob Feller's Mother's Day. Bob Feller's Mother's Day. At she Memorial came to uh, yeah. at Cleveland Stadium. Bob fit the big one there on the lake. Pitched the first pitch, the guy fouled it off, and it went in the stands and his mother in the head. 
<laughs> now that's the story. <laughs> and they to this carry day, on to this day, no memory of no the memory event, of right? the event. We are with Tim Conway, who is the star of Tim Conway's almost, almost funny, very close, almost funny, almost very funny close. America. We're pausing for a station break, and then we're coming right back with more of this stuff. <laughs> You're on the radio show, and I'm Tom Snyder on Service 60 WICC. Uh, Dorf, the last time here, Dorf, uh, the Dorf Golf was just out. Mm -hmm. But now, Dorf, there's what, a half a dozen Dorfs or more? Dorf, we're going to do Dorf until... Uh, nobody wants to buy it. Nobody wants to buy him, and then we're going to do one where he's machine gunned. <laughs> I think basically that would be about the easiest yeah. way to end that one. Uh, yeah, Dorf Goes Auto Racing is out now. Mm -hmm. That's uh, just come out uh, this month, and then Dorf will go skiing, and Dorf will do just about anything that you can do on tape until uh, Dorf builds a nice house for me in Encino, and then he's out of there. Yeah, we get him into another neighborhood. Yeah, that's kind of a fun character, because... Because that also was something that was never supposed to be uh, any more than just an afternoon. Uh, we went out to Westlake Golf Course, and I buried myself uh, in the dirt right. and uh, played a little golf. And uh, dogs did strange things to me while I was buried. And they left me there for lunch and everything. It's all it's, it's humorous guys that those mm -hmm. uh, special effects guys are. And uh, lo and behold, it became uh, something that uh, we all know and love and cherish here in America now. So uh, I'm very, uh, very happy with it. Um, do you do you ever get serious? I hope not. No, really. No, I, no, I try not to be. No, I can't think of anything that really has uh, brought us here. Well, I I figure you're only here for a matter of moments. I know, but I know. mean, you know, Tim, you you read all this stuff in the paper. You mm -hmm. get the Times in the morning and the new Supreme Court justice and the water shortage in L.A. Mm -hmm. and 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 uh, Pete Rose is going to jail. And I it, sorry, Pete's going to jail. That's yeah. the only <laughs> yeah. thing that really annoys me. But what do you mean? Yeah, the Supreme justice and all that really doesn't bother me. I'm sorry Pete's going to jail. Because I'll be going to jail someday soon, too. But, and I don't... Uh... <laughs> See, Pete should have come out and just said yes, you know, right away. And then right, everybody would have right. forgotten about it. It's that no business. I mean, if anybody ever catches me, I haven't done that much, but if anybody ever does, i got to go, yeah, you're right. Yeah, boom. I did. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Now, what's next? You know, so then they blow right over it. But you tell them no, that you didn't, and they get so upset and investigate you and everything. I, I, I couldn't do that, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah that, like like on election day, do you, do you go to the polling place? I haven't voted uh, since <laughs> seriously since. Um, uh, see, I I I. I uh, oh fought rather well for Kennedy to put him in and then I, when the, you know, they uh, didn't allow him to finish the term, I said, well, I'm not going to shove another guy in there that I would like to see in there. Mm -hmm. so, no, I haven't honestly voted uh, since uh, Kennedy. I, but, well, who would you vote for? I mean, I don't see anybody, you know, since then that I really would have uh, rushed out to somebody's garage with a flag on it to go in there <laughs> where the dog is messed and mark my ballot. <laughs> <laughs> People should know no. that in Los Angeles, right. the polling places are <laughs> citizens' garages. That's true. The flag hanging out there. And a dog. And a dog, yeah, right. That either bites you or does something on but your you shoe. But you see, then you're the reason that when I go to my garage right. in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and there are like 789 souls in my little right. precinct, when yeah. I get there at 2 o'clock, I'm the third person of right. the day. That's right. Because yeah. a lot of people like you, Me, you just don't right. go. I don't go. No, no. But I also don't complain about it. I'm real pleased about everything. <laughs> I really am. I'm so doggone happy. That I don't care. I don't care who's president. I don't know who's president because I don't vote. It's a brush or, or whatever his name is now. So, great. So he's doing a good job. You know, that's fine, true. I guess. I don't vote. I they don't all complain. do the same thing. No, I, I don't care. You know, <laughs> do whatever you want to me. Put me in jail. I don't care. I don't have any rights, so why am I fighting for him? What about the rights of your children and Who your Who cares? Wife? Let them get their own, their own job. Life. None of my, you know, none of my kids are working. A guy calls up and says, your kid was hurt on the job. It's not my kid. <laughs> none of them are working. How would he be hurt on a job? <laughs> So let's see. You don't vote. Do you do you go to high school reunions or? Do I went you... to one. Yeah, not mine. I got to the wrong one. I knew nobody. I'm standing there staring at people. I said, "Gee, it sure have changed." It wasn't even my class. No wonder they've changed. So I, I'm not going anymore. I missed it by a month. I got to the wrong one. But what the heck? Yeah, I went to one. Yeah, you look at the old girlfriend and you go, "Gee." God, are you ugly? And uh, well, I'm no prize myself, but I mean, whew, boy, the, people get old in a hurry. There, I mean, those uh, reunions are scary. Yeah, and uh, nobody's really uh, all that successful. Neither am I. So we all sit around and uh, pretend. Now, why? You know, here you go putting yourself down. You happen yeah. to be one of the most successful people in comedy in this town. You're, you're, you're kidding. 
Yes, is I, that true? No, yeah. you are. Why am I? Oh, great. Well, then I guess I. For example, when people when I when I was leaving the room today, uh, mm -hmm. they said uh, at at lunch. Who will be in tonight? I said, Tim Conway. Said, wow. Oh, God, Tim Conway. That's, that's pretty exciting. great. Yeah. And I said, so you'll listen? They said, no. No, 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 no. no. That's, well, that's the story of my career, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, she's great. You going to watch? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, hey, not a bad little show. Too bad too nobody was yeah. watching. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and when you go on vacation, well, you don't go on vacation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I go everywhere. Yeah, you know, that that's a lot of junk about, uh, you know, you can't go anywhere when you start because I'm not a star. Well, I can understand Presley couldn't go anywhere, but uh, uh, but or, I go everywhere. I went to or, Disney. Or, or Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Well, yeah, there's, I guess they're categories, you know, but uh, uh, I spent a lot of time with uh, the public. I, I, I went to Disney once, and I was sitting on a park bench, and, and one of our neighbors came up and said, how can you come to Disney? I mean, aren't you really bothered by people? And and I said, oh, yeah, you know, but I suffered. Now, nobody had asked me for my picture or autograph or anything. I had actually forced my autograph on several people because I felt that it was necessary to do it. And a Japanese gentleman came up to me, and he said, you take picture and i and this lady was talking at the time and i said sure i said you know they do come up and ask yeah. so i got up and i put my arm around his wife and he said no no you you take picture you take picture me my wife so uh he gave me the camera and i took a picture of him and his wife and <laughs> get out of here we are with tim conway who is the star of tim conway's Semi-humorous. Semi-humorous America. <laughs> now, you know that guys who are writing newspaper um, reviews already are writing Tim Conway's Funny America. Ha, ha, you think this is funny where our country's in trouble. I mean, they all think of those, uh, you know, reviews long before they see the show, probably, I would imagine. You, yeah. don't, you don't fear the critics, though, do you? I haven't read... Uh, uh, um, a critique since the last time I voted. That's right. Yeah. I, uh, no, 20, 27 years ago was the last one I uh, wrote. They said that uh, Tim Conway has made the same impression in show business as a super chief going through Elkhart, which is... <laughs> so, I didn't. I guess I stopped reading him, you know, because I wanted to kill the guy and blow sure. up his kid and yeah. everything. And I said that's silly. So I have not read a review. Uh, I worked with Tom Poston uh, for a couple of summers doing the Odd Couple, and he has not read a review on himself in 24 years. People don't believe it because they say, "Oh yes, you you go in a room, sure. you go in a closet, you read things." I don't. I really don't. I don't. Uh, I haven't read one in uh, 24. So I have no idea what the press is saying about me. Uh, you know, if you go out and do a play, and at the end the curtain uh, closes and people boo and hiss and come on stage and tear your clothes off and everything, you know that you're not very, really very true. You've, you've, True. you've annoyed an entire yeah. audience. Right. But they don't do that, then you know, well, you know, I guess I didn't know all my lines. Yeah, like if the curtain comes down and everybody applauds. Applauds and they, or and stands up. Yep. Normally they're standing up to leave, but I stopped yeah. them and, uh, you know, <laughs> yell fire and they turn around, so it looks like a standing <laughs> ovation. It's great. <laughs> Tim Conway's Semi-Funny America. Yes. Coming up Sunday night, ABC Television Network, 8.30 Eastern and Pacific. 730 Central. 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 Yeah. What's with those Central people? Did you know, like when I was a kid, I didn't know there was such a thing as Central Time, that we were different from the rest of the world? I didn't either. No, I, I we never were I normal were people. All on one time. Normal yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, strange. Now, now we create inferiority. For That's true people. for those people. Just in one little area, one little pocket. They're all little tiny. They go to bed earlier because they see everything earlier. They miss an awful lot, I'm mm -hmm. sure, during the course of the day. They have more time for doing those things that we weren't allowed to do as kids yes. in the central time zone. Yep. There's more of that <laughs> to in come. the central time zone. Yes. yes. People do a lot more yay boxing. More children. There. Yes. yes. Not necessarily in these times. No. Back when we were doing it, more children. Yes. yes. Because then it was a no no. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> <laughs> we'll be right back with Tim Conway after a station break. Tim Conway's Funny America. Semi-humorous. Now, wouldn't you think funny. that, uh, that if, if the executives at ABC were listening, and, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons I do so well is my management never hears this. That's good. Yeah. You're in good position. But wouldn't you think that if, if they heard it, that they would say, you know, this Conway, is a he's a troublemaker. That's true. They should, too. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm one of those guys who'll stay home for more money and all that and walk out and, uh, and do a lot of nasty things to the network. Yeah. If I knew who the people were, I don't know the executives at ABC. That's probably my fault. Well, they change so rapidly. They do. Yeah, so I don't I don't go to Hollywood parties. I went to one Hollywood party, and uh, a car park came up. What I thought was a car park it was a guy in a red coat, and he said, can I take your car? And I said, yes, and he did. And uh, I, it was 30 days later when they found it. It was in Mexico. <laughs> That's the truth. I was, we went for a party. But You're Steve, kidding. No, no, no. Stephen Eady. And the guy came up in a red coat, and he said, can I have your car? And I said, yes. And that was it. I said, do I need a ticket? He said, I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, seriously, he took it. It was gone. 
they found in Mexico. <laughs> well, I, I thought it was so clever. I really didn't get annoyed. Have you seen this show in living color? Uh, yes, I like that. Yeah, it's a yeah, funny I show. Like you would, and so would I. So would I. Variety's but, back, and they're not telling anybody. That's but great. But they had the great sketch about the two black dudes who says, how do you get a Mercedes? And they says, and he says, you put on the red jacket, you go right. to a party in Beverly Hills, they no bring problem. you a Mercedes, and give you $10, and say, please take good care of the car. And you yeah. say, I sure will, and just drive <laughs> it off, you know? Yeah, yeah go that's on. actually what this guy did, you yeah. know? Yeah. Just uh, moved out with it. Yeah, I like Living Color. That's good. I hope that goes on for a while. Me yeah. too. Yeah, they kind of snuck in and did Variety without uh, saying anything to anybody, and because uh, everybody said Variety is dead, and uh, these guys are doing it, so I guess they've uh, reincarnated it. For and a while. you don't share that view, do you? I'll tell Variety is dead. You know no. who else does Variety on TV? Uh, Super Dave Osborne. Yes. He sneaked yeah. it back on Showtime. Strange as it may seem, I guess in this uh, Tim Conway semi-humorous uh, America, we're kind of doing a variety. You know, we went to Minneapolis, and I was standing out. Uh, they had been a, a big thunderstorm the night before, and we were doing this thing in Minneapolis. And I put on a hard hat and one of those uh, coats that uh, light up at night and was standing out on the road, and uh, people were crossing from one building to, anux, uh, from the, to the next. It was a big construction area. To another. To another. Crossing yeah. from one, one building to, to the next. And did I say next? <laughs> I did. Next on channel. Next on the news. Right? PBS on the news. Uh, and I told these people that a 220 line had been broken underneath the street, yeah. and in order to cross Cross, they would have to ground themselves uh, because we were getting shock off the street. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, you know, on um, oil trucks and things like that, they drag a chain in back in case lightning uh, hits yeah, them. Yeah. And they said, fine. And they, and, I, and they said, we don't have a chain. And I said, well, I happen to have some with me. We cut chains about an, a foot and a half long, and we would hand them to these people. And, of course, they'd have to bend over to drag them across the street. And we had 30 people dragging chains <laughs> up and down. The, I couldn't. I actually stopped at one time and looked. And all up and down the street, people are walking in and out of stores dragging these grounding chains. And families who had three or more, I'd say, well, you know, hold on, and the guy on the end dragged the chain. And they would do that. And the little kid would be dragging the chain, and the parents would be hanging on. And that's kind of what this show is about. So yeah. it's, in a sense, it's I guess semi -funny. it's semi-funny. Yeah. It's, it's semi-funny. <laughs> See, I'm laughing. I don't care about an audience. It's not important for an audience to laugh at what I do. I, if I can chuckle myself, I think that's worth it. I felt that way for years, you know, yeah. that if I like it, that's sure. all that matters. That's, yeah. yeah, that's all it needs. You know, you only need one guy. You're Self. You know, I have very small audiences. <laughs> I entertain myself. 30 people with grounding chains. Yep. 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 Walking around many up. Then one lady came out of a store and but, she but, said... But no, nobody said, well, well, why do we have to do this? Well, so you ground yourself in case there's electrical shock. Yeah. Bang, you got the chain. Yeah. It'll go right back into the ground. Yeah. And everybody bought it. Yeah. <laughs> and one lady came out of a store and she said, you know, I'm going to be in here longer than I thought. Can I hang on to the chain? And I said, yes. <laughs> and we moved out. We were through. So somewhere in Minneapolis, there's this lady walking around still dragging this chain with her. However... Yeah. Has lightning touched her? No. No. No, no, no. She's grounded. Right. Then we went to a, a, um, a supermarket, and I was standing next to the produce department and uh, giving out tickets for people who were uh, uh, parked in the uh, celery uh, aisle because we had a red line there. We said, that, you know, the red line is no parking, and the white zone is for loading over here and giving people tickets. And they were paying uh, the tickets when they were uh, going out. <laughs> So you can do things like that still. Yes, you can. Yeah, we don't harm people. We just kind of do uh, silly little things with it. They want to go along with it, fine. If they don't, um, we torture them. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told the story here one night mm. that every year in America, you know, this dog for the beer, uh, Spuds. Yeah, McKenzie, Spuds, yeah. He gets about 10,000 letters a year. Mm. Now, just think about mm -hmm. this 10,000 people. Wow. Educated a people sit down and they write a letter to a dog. Mm -hmm. And the amazing part is they think that the dog, dog. is going to answer the letter. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, mom, did my letter from Spuds <laughs> come back today? You know, I mean, if they yeah. would write to the brewery, I could understand. Yeah. Or to August Bush, mm -hmm. who's even dead. But, right. But to the dog. Dog, yeah. And they think, then you're in trouble. The dog's going to read the letter. Yep. Yeah. 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 Those are, that's my audience. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boy. So what else besides uh, grounding chains? Or was that the only thing in Minneapolis that you That did? was uh, one of the things in Minneapolis that we did. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I, I pose as this um, uh, fashion police, and we stopped people for uh, bad clothing. And we stopped a lady, uh, and I said to her, excuse me, but uh, that coat that you have on, we were in Salt Lake City. And uh, I said that, you know, the coat doesn't look too good, and we're going to have to give you a citation of 411 for wearing a bad coat. And she said, well, I've had this coat. I, I brought it from uh, Wisconsin or wherever. And I said, is that an out-of-state coat? <laughs> and she said, yes. And I said, is it registered? 
Uh, she said, no. And I said, well, then we're going to have to cite you for registration. But she said, it goes with a suit. And I said, where are the pants? And she said, I lost them. I said, did you file a, a missing pants report? She said, no. I said, okay, we're, could you just sketch the pants, and we'll put it on the side of a milk carton? And the lady stood there sketching these pants. And at some time, you have to say to yourself, wow. wow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> There's but, a... but don't they know you, don't they? Well, I wear various disguises. It's funny. I was dressed as, as a waitress, and I was serving <laughs> coffee to the guy, the truckers out here in Ontario, the biggest truck stop uh, in the country. And nobody said, uh, aren't you, you know... Yeah. Uh, but I would do something to them. We were serving uh, Nouvelle Cuisine. You know, these guys come in to eat the meals. You can't carry one of the meals that these guys eat with right, the gravy on right, it and everything. Right. And we would serve... Uh, There's probably no quiche on the plate. No, 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 no. no. Oh, no, no, no. We would serve uh, two quail eggs and a little piece of bacon about a, uh, an inch long to uh -huh. them as a special, $1.95, uh -huh. uh, as Nouvelle Cuisine and little toast points. And... <laughs> These guys would get a little annoyed because they got, you know, 400 miles to get in before noon, That's and right. now they got two quail eggs. And they're there. hungry. Yeah. Right. But nobody said, to, uh, I walked away from one guy, and he turned to the other guy on, on camera, and he didn't obviously know they were being filmed, and he said, that is the ugliest woman I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm not a great-looking guy, but if I had been a woman, I can imagine what they would have gone through. We are with Tim Conway. We will continue after these messages. <laughs> We're back for the last precious moments with Tim Conway, who is the host of Tim Conway's Semi-Funny semi -funny. Semi -funny America, yep. ABC TV, Sunday, July 29th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, and Pacific Time, 7.30 Central. Right. In, in all the things that you've done with mm -hmm. Carol Burnett and with Corman and with Poston on the Road and mm -hmm. The Odd Couple... What, in your view, is the funniest piece of business that, that you've ever been involved in? I think on the road, we had some a little, uh, and you'd have to see them physical things worked out uh, with Tom uh, Poston, who was a marvelous performer. I think maybe the funniest thing that uh, I can recall doing was the dentist sketch with Harvey, uh, where I was a dentist, and uh, I stabbed myself with Novocaine in the hand, and that became numb, and then my, I stabbed myself in the leg and in the head and everything, and just eventually became immobile. Now, Harvey didn't... So he remained in the chair, uh, in this dentist chair as a patient, and in total hysterics for about 11 minutes. As long as I could have stood there uh, just staring at him, he would still be in that chair today, mm -hmm. I'm sure. But I finally uh, broke up and uh, went sideways, too. But I think that's probably the single funniest thing that we've ever done. It is said in the business mm -hmm. that Harvey Corman cannot be near you without starting to laugh. Is that true? Uh, Harvey's a very sick man, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not well. He no, really but, but he should but, be committed. But you do have him, don't That's you? true. Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, well, in the Burnett show, if you ever watch uh, the reruns, if you will watch the fact that I never look Harvey in the eye, no, because as soon as I do, he goes. <laughs> so I'm always looking away, 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 and, and then uh, suddenly I will turn to him and look him straight in the eye, and you will see the smile <laughs> come on his face. He couldn't stand to look me, and and I knew I had him, and, and, and sometimes I would do a whole sketch without laughing at or looking at him, and he would laugh because I wasn't looking at him. But when you him. guys and your wives, when you go to dinner or wherever, can you get him there, too? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. He is... Uh, well, didn't you tell the story of American Airlines to Hawaii? Where, where you, you absolutely nailed him? Where you played the part of the ticket agent? Yes. Yeah. Where uh, I, w I happened to be standing next to American Airlines counter and a Japanese chap came, yeah. came up who didn't speak very good English. Uh, I can understand that because he was from Japan. They don't do that very well. <laughs> and he said, you are seeing Gaojunga, something like that. And I happened to look like I work for American Airlines. And I said, yeah. give me your ticket. Still do. And Right. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I said, are you going to be... Uh, uh, eating on the plane? Yes. And I stapled a little thing to his little ticket. And then I said, are you abusing the restrooms? Yes. Uh, your wife traveling? Yes. Uh, kids? Yes. Uh, where do you live? Yes. Yes. And it, with each thing, I stapled something to his ticket. Um, will you be using the restroom during the flight or after the... And yes, Corman yeah. is watching. Corman is watching. And I stapled... When this guy walked away, he had 40 staples in his ticket and a bunch of... It looked like a turkey when he walked away. And I'm sure that he is somewhere in Hawaii still trying to get the staples out of his uh, ticket to go home. <laughs> and Harvey did go a little sideways on that. Yeah. The show is called Tim Conway's Semi-Humorous America. America. It'll be on the air Sunday night, July 29th at 8.30 p.m. Tim's going to be watching. I'm going to be watching. Uh, beyond that, folks, it's up to you. I mean, it's always a pleasure coming here, Tom. I'm serious. I, I didn't realize that it had been that long, you know, because you're a good interviewer. Now, this hour flew by for me. Um, it, I've <laughs> well, never had I a happier love, hour. I, I loved every hour of it myself. <laughs> Tim Conway, Sunday night on ABC 
Night TV. This is the Friday Night Radio Show. Do we Thank get paid Thursday for this? night. Thanks for listening. No everybody. money? No. There's nothing There's at no shirt, money. t-shirt, Oreos, anything. Bupkin.